welcome back. Today I am showing you how to add a neck band to a knit garment when you don't know the measurements. Hey guys, if you're new here, I am Kate and this is Sewing From Scratch where I teach you everything I know and learn more myself along the way. It's more about sharing my dressmaking journey and learning more about my practice and one of the ways that I learn the best is by teaching. So that's how Sewing From Scratch came to be. I hope you enjoy it, I hope you hit that subscribe button and I hope you stick around, you know, leave me comments, join this community that we are fostering and Welcome. So today's video, like I said, it's gonna be how to add a neckband to a knit garment. This is particularly when you don't have a pattern piece or a measurement for a neckband. Say the pattern comes with a hood or it comes with a cowl neck or it comes with instructions for bias binding, which is what this pattern calls for. I'm gonna give you the quick breakdown, it's super easy you guys, on how to add a neck band instead of those other things. So if you are a beginner sewer, you may not have done a neck band before. You might be intimidated, but they are not scary. They are really quite basic. And if you've done a cuff, you can do a neck band. And even if you haven't, you can do it. It's, it's very simple. I'm gonna show you how we do it. And the pattern I'm using today is the Aspen Tank from Seen and Sewn Patterns and I will link to that below and actually I'm going to be linking to the blog post that I have written and guest posted on the Seen and Sewn website. So you guys, there's going to be a little bit more information in there about percentages and knit um, variables and fabric choices and stuff like that. So you can check that out down below in the description box. Other than that, let's get started. So the first thing you want to do is measure the neckband and you can do this in two different ways. The first way is to measure on the pattern piece. If you do it this way, you will need to remember to measure the front piece and if it's on the fold, multiply that by two. And then you're going to do the back piece and multiply that by two as well if it is also cut on the fold. And the thing to remember when you're measuring on the pattern piece is to subtract the shoulder seam seam allowance on every single seam where there's going to be a seam allowance. So each shoulder will likely have two seam allowances to subtract and then your back might also have a seam allowance if there's a two-piece back or some other design features as well or princess seams in the front, etc. So then you're gonna add those two together and now you're gonna take your percentage of that and figure out how much you want to uh, use for your new fabric piece. So once you have your seam allowances subtracted, in this example I'm left with 27 inches and I'm going to now multiply that by 80% and I'm using 80% because I'm using a cotton lycra with relatively good stretch. If you're using something stretchier you'll use less of a percentage and if it's less stretchy you will use a higher percentage so that the piece ends up being longer. Once you have that number then you need to add seam allowance for your band itself. So I like to use a quarter inch seam on each side, so that equals a half inch. So now I'm adding a half inch to my 21.6 inch measurement to give me 22.1 inches. My math is wrong there, as you can see. The, this is the preferred, my preferred way of measuring is to actually construct the garment or at least the bodice, top bodice part and then measure for the neckband. I get a more accurate reading this way just because it's actually made and you never know if your cutting is off or your seams or something like that. So you're just going to take your tape and measure all the way around the neckline and then use 80% of that number as well. You can see mine was a half inch bigger than what my pattern pieces were. So it ends up being just a tiny, tiny bit bigger. Ah. 
then go ahead and cut your neckband. I am using a one and a half inch width here and to get your width calculation you're going to want to take whatever amount you want to be sticking out and multiply that by two and then add your seam allowance to each side again because we're going to be folding this over and just a quick mention too that this pattern is actually made for wovens which I did not know that but it makes sense now why the edges would be bias bound so this is a great way to take some of those woven patterns and use them for knits and especially if they have bias binding in the pattern instructions and you'll find that you'll be hacking everything with neck bands and it'll just make your pattern stash more versatile and maybe you'll find that you don't even end up buying as many patterns because you have the confidence now to hack almost anything. And I will mention that you can use this exact same method on your armbands. You might find that you need to change the percentage a little bit, but that will, you really won't know until you have it on. So once you have that made, you're going to sew it together in a loop and then kind of just put it on your, hold it up to your neck band to make sure it looks good. A little bit of stretch there. Then you're going to find all the quarter points. So to do this, you will hold it fold it in half with the seam on one side and then snip the opposite side and that'll be the front half and then match up the front and back notches and make the side marks i prefer to use my scissors but you can also use a marker or a chalk or some sort of fabric pen to mark your points then you're going to repeat this step on the garment itself now the shoulder seams likely won't be the halfway point so you're going to match up the shoulder seams find the front center back center and then match up the front and back centers to find your side centers which again likely won't be right on the shoulder seams then match up your neck band notches with your bodice neckline notches and go ahead and sew that all the way around and I'm sorry about those sounds in the background. If you guys can hear all those animal noises, my kids are reading a book. <laughs> of course, always that kind of timing. And you're just going to stretch the, this evenly out throughout as you sew. It shouldn't be super, super tight and it shouldn't be exactly loose. You kind of want just a nice, healthy stretch in between the quarters. And being careful not to catch the rest of the bodice in the neckline because that will cause a lot of puckering and pleating that you really don't want. Okay, so now at this point I have my neckband on. I did armbands the same way, they're just a little bit bigger. And so now at this point you can make the decision if you want to top stitch over this, push the seam allowance down and top stitch, or just leave it as is. Either is fine, just depends on your taste and your skill set I think I'm going to leave this actually this was made kind of like a muslin but I really like it now but the only thing is I use this black thread which does not look good especially on the arms you can see or the shoulder seams you can see that black really well or bad whichever way you look at it the side seams aren't too terrible but I'm debating taking these apart and changing the thread on there but it's done. Maybe I'll just use it as pajamas or something and then make another one in uh, more, something a little more fun for summer, which is of course what we're all thinking about now, isn't it? So yeah, I will leave the link to the blog post that I am writing for this in the description box below on the Seen and Sewn Patterns website so you can get a little more information and just I'm gonna try and find some find a chart or something to put in there about different bases and different stretches but a general rule is if your fabric is more stretchy you will need less percentage cut so this is about a 10 ounce cotton lycra so I used 80% but if you're if you have something really stretchy like 
maybe bamboo or something, or a rib knit, you can get away with less stretch, maybe 75, 78%, something like that. And then um, I'm talking percentage of the measurement around like we did at the beginning. And obviously if it has less stretch, maybe like an interlock or something, you would want to increase your percentage of the circumference. So it'll go up to maybe 85 or something percent. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you go down and check out the blog post for this over on Seed and Sewn Patterns. I do have my link there to the pattern shop as well and I'll link directly to the Aspen tank for you guys. I did alter this top a little bit. I ended up adding five inches to the top bodice part and then cutting off four. So technically I added one inch and then I took the sides in a lot. So I think I made, I started with a medium, but I probably could have made the small, maybe even the extra small. When I go ahead and make the another one of these, I will try it in the small and see how that goes. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave me a comment down below and let me know what patterns are you hoping to use this neckband method for. I'm glad you stopped by. Again, hit that like button and the subscribe and I hope to catch you in the next video. Bye.